Right here, first at five, new documents are revealing what was found inside a New Albany, Indiana funeral home, currently under investigation by the Indiana Attorney General's Office. The state of Indiana opened that investigation into Spring Valley Funeral Home after a customer made a complaint and an inspection found unsafe conditions. The funeral home's license has been suspended. Hello, everybody. I'm Doug Profit. And I'm Shay McAllister. That funeral home sits right at 13th and Spring Street. Jose Alonso and photojournalist Jessica Farley tell us what the owner and former owner are saying about this new discovery. Spring Valley Funeral Home and Cremation in New Albany is under public scrutiny for allegations of overcharging customers and inadequate services. A consumer complaint filed in July started the investigation of the Spring Valley Funeral Home by the Indiana Attorney General's office. And an inspection report in June reveals the shocking details of what was inside. The details trace back to the embalming room. It's where Indiana Professional Licensee Agency compliance officers started their inspection after noticing a strong smell. Officials found blood and other fluids on surfaces, cremated remains of 15 people who died before 2024, and six large containers of medical waste. The current owner, Trevor Lytle, claims previous owner, Anthony Oxendine, left those containers. Uh, so they did show up the night before the inspection. Um, like, like uh, they said, Anthony has been in the building. It's a leased building. Um, so we, I got into the, the purchase and took over. Lido attended the last funeral and cemetery board meeting on August 1st. He said the medical waste was left the night before the inspection and that Oxendine was still living in the top floor. The department went on to question Lido about the 15 cremated remains. Anthony brought those back from Louisville, saying that they were New Albany cases. So I intend to get those all back to their families instead of count on him to do it. We reached out to Oxendine, but he declined to give a written statement. We asked him about the investigation and living situation, to which Oxendine says he no longer lives upstairs and knows nothing about the investigation. The AG's office has deemed the business as a threat to public safety and health. They ordered the State Board of Funeral and Cemetery Services to suspend their operating license for 90 days. In New Albany, Jose Alonso, WHAS 11 on your side. The Attorney General's office says they have filed an administrative complaint against this business. They also want customers to know if you currently have family members in the building, it's time to reach out to a different funeral home and arrange a transfer. The office says they cannot help or give any legal guidance on that transfer process. Also here tonight at 5 o'clock, right now an investigation is underway after a horse had to be euthanized this week at the Kentucky State Fair. It happened at the Fair's World Championship uh, Horse Show. That's inside Freedom Hall. According to Ian Cox of Kentucky Venues, the horse was pulling a small roadster bike behind it and the wheel made contact with the actual ring itself. This horse has been, the horse show, by the way, has been held at the fairgrounds ever since 1908. We spoke, to, we spoke to Ian Cox, who called the incident heartbreaking. Those horses are part of our family, and so when incidents like this happen, it's never something we expect. And unfortunately, um, seeing something like that occur today breaks our hearts, but we know that um, it was done, what, what happened and the response was not only humane, it was dignified, and we know that fortunately the rider was uninjured. That horse was taken to Lexington for a necropsy and a final determination of the injuries. Last year, a horse also died during the World Championship Horse Show, but that was from an aneurysm. More news right here at 5 o'clock. Metro Police are right now trying to figure out who pulled the trigger after a 17-year-old boy was shot. It happened in Louisville's Bonaire neighborhood. Officers were called to the area of Windward Way and Radiance Road around 10 o'clock last night. Police there found a teen with a graze wound to the head. They say they do expect he will survive his injuries. If anyone has any information on this, you are urged to call the anonymous LMPD tip line. That number is 574 LMPD. 
And we have more local news for you right here at 5 tonight. Louisville Mayor Craig Greenberg's office appointed a brand new interim director of youth transitional services. We learned today the longtime Metro Corrections Major Stephen Gilbert is filling the position. Youth transitional services is responsible for kids who are in the juvenile justice system. Major Gilbert has worked extensively with staff on training and the protocols. He will lead the department while it transitions out of its current location on West Jefferson Street. The facility is being transferred over to the Kentucky Department of Juvenile Justice while the building undergoes major renovations. Louisville Metro Housing Authority is now implementing major changes within our affordable housing system. The organization first identified issues back in March. They found staff had let HUD guidelines go and in some cases relied on outdated information causing delays and a backlog of applications. The changes to Section 8 will be implemented immediately. That includes new leadership appointments, including a director specifically for Section 8. The entire housing voucher team was reorganized with new technology to keep things in order. The housing authority is now working closely with HUD to remedy those issues. Another so enjoyable day in August, and now the cloud cover coming in. We should be in another uh, in for another great night tonight. You know, Ben really does walk through the newsroom, and he says things like marvelous and uh, just fascinating and <laughs> tremendous day. So Gorgeous. You got, a, you got another word for this, Ben? Uh, phenomenal. <laughs> Fantabulous. I'll tell you, the heartbreaker for me is the false fall, <laughs> because then that makes me know that this doesn't last. <laughs> oh, that's uh, true. Uh, yeah, I can promise that. We do have some heat now back in the extended forecast, but opposite of the heat was this morning. We fell down to the 40s for the first time since uh, June 12th. Uh, look at that, 48 in Madison, 49 in Shelbyville, in Brandenburg at 45 degrees. A little chill in the air for this Wednesday morning. Uh, right now, comfortably warm, mild, 76 at Bowman Field. 78 is our high temperature for today officially at Louisville International with a nice little north breeze out there overall. That dew point the lowest we've seen in a while. That's that measure of water content in, in the air or lack of it. 32% humidity and just some high clouds kind of spilling in from time to time, but it will be mostly clear for tonight. Again, some mid to upper 70s over the metro, low 70s outside of the city. Brandenburg and Hardinsburg at 72 degrees and just 73 in LaGrange, so just picture perfect out there. Max HD radar and satellite showing that northeast breeze continuing to give us that fresh air and just some of these high clouds drifting over us uh, from some showers that were decaying out in Missouri. So future cast showing those clouds clearing back down to the upper 40s and 50s for tomorrow morning and just a tad bit warmer. Very low humidity again with upper 70s and lower 80s for tomorrow. Fantastic out there if you get to head out to the ball game. 635 the first pitch at Slugger Field with temperatures initially in the 70s. Couple hours in the game looking at some 60s around sunset with a low of 56. Outlying areas upper 40, 75 at noon tomorrow and your Thursday afternoon high again a little bit warmer at 84 degrees. Uh, we're going to turn up that heat. We'll show you a lot of 90s coming up in our full forecast. All right, Ben, thank you very much. JCPS Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio says it's possible some of the district's magnet and traditional schools could have their bus transportation restored. It follows what he's calling an amazing start to the school year in terms of transportation compared to last year. And WHS 11's Ian Hardwich joining us here today at 5. He's following up from that board meeting last night. Uh, Ian, we know the car rider lines are still long, but when it comes to the buses, they're hoping to restore some of these routes. Do we know when and which schools will get this? Uh, we don't know when uh, it, it could be because there's a few conditions that have to be met. Uh, JCPS has to train an incoming class of TARC drivers in order to get them ready. And if that goes through, they would be able to restore those routes around fall break. That would be for free and reduced lunch students at Mayo, Manual, and Butler Traditional High, along with all students at Johnson Traditional Middle, Coleridge Taylor, and Young Elementary School. Several parents at Coleridge Taylor told me they would keep their kids as car riders even if the bus is restored. We're used to waiting for you know anywhere to 40 minutes. So if we can get bus, that's going to help significantly reduce the car rider line as well. So I think whatever we can do to help, we should be doing it. The district says 60 TARC drivers must pass their training to recommend route restorations. The JCPS school board would need to approve that recommendation, but at last night's meeting, some members showed hesitation. 
I almost hate to even talk about anything else or, or touching anything else. Uh, I, I certainly don't want to sacrifice on time. My preference from operations going forward is on time service as well, not necessarily transportation to everybody, which sounds like a lofty goal. Board member Linda Duncan told us previously that she would vote to restore all routes if the staffing supported it and that she hopes smoother routes will lead to more applicants. Superintendent Dr. Marty Polio feels confident the district will have enough drivers by the next board meeting to recommend those restorations. That's coming up on September 3rd. I'm live in studio, Ian Hardwood. Ian, thank you. And tonight at the night team, we're once again looking at those long car rider lines after that report last night. Now, $2 billion, that's the astounding amount sports betting has been bringing into Kentucky since being legalized last September. Early numbers so far show more than $2.5 million were made in individual bets with this year's NCAA basketball tournament. According to state leaders, $900,000 of it went right toward the Commonwealth's Problem Gambling Assistance Fund. That helps employ addiction hotlines and recovery in our state. $875,000 also went to salaries and benefits for the employees. But the majority of the money, $34 million, went into the Kentucky Pension Fund. Despite these numbers, some still have some concerns about safety, specifically age verification for teenage boys. These are um, very high-tech systems that are doing both uh, uh, account verification and registration as well as geolocation verification and so that is happening in in a really um, in a really robust way through the service providers already the kentucky horse racing and gaming corporation is supposed to be self-funded by the year 2026 well if you were in downtown louisville today you may have seen a sea of green shirts all across the city it was for humana's inaugural community day close to 5,000 humana employees spent the day addressing health related needs all over the city they started the kfc yum center where they helped assemble 1 million meal kits for people throughout louisville and lexington others spent the day cleaning up at waterfront park some were even fishing at the falls of the ohio to test the quality of the water all of this work today in hopes of inspiring others to step up and take ownership of our community. You can always point, point at the problem or think it's someone else's problem. It's all of our problem together as citizens of Louisville to help. And so, and businesses play a huge role there, which we're blessed to be in a community like Louisville. Let, let's, let's keep giving. The final event of the day is happening right now at the Norton Sports and Learning Center. It's a nutrition and well-being festival with cooking demonstrations, new pickleball courts and chair yoga. It goes until 7 o'clock and is free and open to the public.